second step, we have our nice sauce cooking over there. And we're going to do some meatballs, homemade meatballs. We call them Brooklyn meatballs. They're a Sicilian style from my mother's family. Every Italian family has their own style of meatballs. But uh, these are very simple. I don't use lots of ingredients. Uh, no raisins and all this other business. We just make it with the nice chopped meat. I use beef all the time, but some people use veal or pork, whatever you prefer. So we'll, we'll do it with the beef. I use two kinds of beef. Uh, a different, uh, so that one has a little more fat because they come a little juicier that way. Okay, and I believe that the real secret ingredient in these meatballs is the pasta romana cheese. I use this nice fresh grated, I just grated up for us, and we're going to use that, okay? So, now, how much bread do you use? This bread has been, uh, it's day old bread, it's been soaking in warm water. I use about, mm, about like a quarter of a loaf for a pound of meat. That's just an approximate. The more you put in, the softer the meatballs will be. But you have to be careful. You want the consistency to hold together when you, when you cook them, okay? So, now we got our nice Parmigiano Reggiano. Parmigiano Reggiano is probably one of the strongest textured teas, but I like it because uh, I don't have to use as much, and it does give a little kick to them to your meatballs, that is, okay? Okay, we'll put them in. I'm trying to work fast because we have a time limit. And here's the fresh parsley that I just chopped, okay? All this is done ahead of time. You can do it ahead of time. And now, if they're stiff and kind of hard, what we do is, I'm gonna put a little salt in. How much salt? Well, look, that's the way I do it, okay? Try to get it around because you'll find sometimes the salt doesn't mix. You don't need a great deal of salt because the Parmigiano cheese gives it the kick. Now, if they're a little too hard, or if you want them thinner, we'll break an egg in them, okay? Which I forgot to bring out. So, we'll do it without the egg, <laughs> okay? I don't think it matters that much, but you can try them both ways. And if you want them softer, as I said, put a little more of this soft bread. When you, when you cook them up, you won't even know the bread is in there. And uh, a lot of people on cookbooks will tell you don't use the crust of the bread. Well, I pick it up and, and I like the crust in it, but it's got to be softened good. Well, so you soften it up and then you can use it in the, uh, in, the, in the mixture. And that's about it. I think the consistency is pretty good right now. So we'll try a couple, okay? Now we just take them in your hand and uh, I like this kind of... Uh, I don't know, maybe call it an oblong shape. People make round ones, but to Sicilian people, a lot of them make it kind of like that. Now, my wife, Judy, she loves them a little crisp, so I rub them in the breadcrumbs. I don't use breadcrumbs in here. I use the soft bread, but I like them without the breadcrumbs, so we compromise. We do them with breadcrumbs. <coughs> that's because she's from down south, and that's a southern compromise. Do them her way. Anyway, th that's what we do uh, very quickly, okay? And the size depends on, you know, how many you want to make. If you want to give them one or two each, if you want to make smaller ones for the kids. You know, I used to do that because we had a lot of kids and they eat them up before they came out into the sauce. And that's, that's how we'll do them. And then we'll dump them in the hot oil. Most important thing when you put your oil up, I use olive oil and I use a mixture of a, a vegetable oil. I mix the two of them together because the olive oil is good, but it's a little too heavy. But I like the taste and the texture, so I mix the two of them. Make sure it's hot before you put it in, otherwise the oil will kind of seep into the in the meatball. See, I'm making a couple of little ones, so you can make them that way either, whatever you like. Be innovative. That's what I always tell my kids when they call me, and they say, "Pop, what should I do with this?" I say, "Try something. If it's no good, you'll get another chance tomorrow." So, I think that's good. We'll, we'll take these over and I'll start them right on the fire. Okay? Let's go. Ah, now, the oil seems to be getting warm. Look, we drop that in. You see it bubbles? So I know it's ready, okay? And as I said before, it's always nice to make sure your oil is warm. It'll do better for your... Meatballs, and your meatballs won't pick up as much oil. 
okay put them in I made some big ones here normally I make them a little smaller they go further but today we'll do this to get it done quick okay now we'll have those in there and then I like to cook them on the high for about oh like a minute and a half or two a minute when I turn them over I'll lower the heat okay and let them cook but they brown now And, that's, and then as soon as they're done, I save some on the side to eat them that way because a lot of my family enjoys them that way, especially my wife Judy. And uh, the rest I put into the sauce. I like mine both ways. But uh, you can make a meal on them just like this, you know, with a salad or something. And uh, if they last that long, because when you make them right, and you have to understand, sometimes they're not going to come as good as other times. Maybe the quality of the meat is different, you know? So don't be discouraged. You just try them again. Because when they come out right, boy, they're good. I think you'll like them. And then when we finish this, what I'm going to do is uh, put up the pot for the pasta. And we're going to make a penne pasta. And we're going to make it with a regatta cheese stuffing kind of thing. See, I have the cheese out. I'll show you. And then we put it in the large casserole and we bake it off, okay? And it makes a good dinner for a bunch, for six, eight, ten people, whatever you want. And it's a one dish item, so you don't have to go cleaning up so many different pots and pans. My wife says that's the problem with Italian cooking. So I try to use the same pans. Okay? I'm gonna cook these only three quarters of the way because what I do with them is, uh, Put them right in the sauce, let them finish in the sauce, and if they're not cooked all the way, I want them brown, then the sauce will just, they're like little sponges, and they'll pick up the flavor, okay? So, we'll do that, and then uh, we'll go on to the next course. Okay, this is the first batch. We'll take some of these out, and uh, the rest we'll have to cook up. Yeah, these are done pretty well, so if we want to eat them, we can do that. And these, we'll just cook a little more, and we'll use these for the sauce. And these fellows, let's see. Oh, yeah. Mmm. I like them. <laughs> That's the trouble. Don't taste them too often because you'll eat them all up before we get to the other part. Okay? Excuse me. <laughs> right in. Right in. There's our sauce, look. Come along. Oh, you see the hunks of the tomato? Now, I have a dear friend called Bob Rossi. If he were here, he wouldn't want that. He likes his sauce like watery like that. But not really watery, but all the tomatoes gone. As I told you before, I like it this way. If you don't like it this way, puree your tomato before you put it in. Use your uh, machine. Well, cut it up and you'll get a different kind of sauce. Try it both ways. The tomato, I think, is excellent. It, it melts in your mouth. You don't even realize that it's a hump when you're eating them. And all your meat is giving it wonderful flavor. We'll let that simmer and maybe go on to the next step. Okay, uh, now this is uh, the wine. We're going to add a little wine right now. Uh, this is a, a local wine, a Saint Chillon from a 2005. It's a lovely wine, and it's, we had part of it last evening, so I'm going to use part in here. Never use those cheap wines that they sell for cooking. They'll spoil your whole dish and work so hard for. Use a decent wine. I'm going to put a little in here. 
because it's a red sauce, okay? And that's enough. And then I'll start this up and I'll cook it for another three or four minutes. In the meantime, I've taken some sauce out and I brought it over here because we're going to assemble the macaroni dish right now, okay? So let's go over here and assemble this dish quickly. Okay, now here we have some of the sauce. I, I took it from that pot. I'm going to spread it here. And this is the dish that we're going to make our casserole kind of business. And of course, I'll get more sauce as we go along. But I put a little here just to get started, okay? And then we'll get some of our pasta. Uh, okay. And we'll put some of that right in here. Okay, this is a penny pasta, cooked for about nine and a half minutes. Commercial pasta, but it comes from Italy. Last time I was over there in San Remo, I picked up a couple of boxes, okay? So, we'll put part of that in. Now, this is the regatta sauce. I mixed it all up, and it's regatta cheese, and we're going to put nice fresh parsley, and this is the mozzarella, okay? So we're going to mix some mozzarella around in here, just like that, and then we're going to put some of this in quickly in different spots. Okay, now I'm going to spread it a little bit, spread it around, and, and I'm going to get some more sauce now, okay? So you can... I'll go over there and I'll get some more stuff. Okay, now, nice sauce in here mixed with this. I'm working very quickly today because of the weather. So, when you do it at home, you can have to take your time and, and make sure it mixes up pretty good, okay? I think the trick here is nice mozzarella and great the regatta. You buy that? In little packets. I have another pack, but I didn't bring it out yet. We'll see how it goes. And then I put a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano, huh? For the flavor. Let's get a little more pasta on top. Okay. Like I said before, kids, uh, this, we got the cheese. Mmm, delicious. I'm sure when you're at home, guys, you'll be a little neater than the chef here is. Okay. That should do it. Okay, that's fine. Now, okay, finish it up. The rest of this cheese. Two, three, four. That's the dish, okay? I'll show you when you're home. And then top it off with a little Parmesan cheese and put it in the oven. Cook it for about 15 minutes. Nice low heat. And I think you've got to have a delicious dinner. Au revoir. Bye bye. See you.